Grandma's Grandma's kitchen. 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 There's a fiddle tune and a wooden spoon while she's stirring and a singing. There's friends leaving our family land and then the phone's usually ringing. No matter who you are or what you've done, everything's forgiven. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank and ain't it good to be in Grandma's kitchen? Grandma's kitchen. From Tunes and Wooden Spoons, and what a way to spend an afternoon with just two of the best right here, Ashley McIsaac and Kathy Holly from right here in Port Hood. Welcome, Ashley, and welcome, Kathy. Thank you. <laughs> so we're going to be hearing lots more of that in a few minutes, but right now I'm going to take you around to the kitchen. Here we go. Hi there. That was a great start, wasn't it? <laughs> so today we're going to be, Ashley is actually going to be helping me. We're going to be making, um, I know, just everybody loves Ashley. We're going to be making some fish cakes, some just good old fish cakes from right here. Recipe from Teddy McDonald, better known as Teddy Angazel. Uh, Many of you may not know that, that uh, so many of the, the Scottish names uh, around here, uh, they take your name and they, they take their father's name. And uh, so Teddy and Gazelle, and Gazelle would be his father. And uh, so that kind of styles who you are. For example, I'm Mary Janet Donald Alec Donald Cross. McDonald. That, that's my handle. It's not used very often, but my father was Donald and his father was Alec and they were known as the crosses that came from Scotland. So anyway, here we go and welcome everybody and all kinds of wonderful people. Hello, Mary Pitts. And uh, we're, we're, there's a few little things that I want to say before I begin. 
So, um, I, uh, just want to say that I had a beautiful week and, uh, Going to work this week, many of you saw that I needed to ride to Halifax because one daughter had to go to Halifax on Thursday, another one had to go on Friday. So anyway, my car went up on Friday. So hi, Tammy, Margie, Brennan, Krista, Kelly, you're all probably still together there in Halifax. They were having a, a, a little gathering of family last night, which was really nice because Tammy was with us for, well, six weeks and she's flying out on Tuesday. Margie has been with us the same amount of time and she's flying out on Tuesday as well, but she's returning and she's going back to Fort Mac to pick up her vehicle and drive across Canada. So that's, that's great. And uh, today, uh, before we get started, I really want to get these birthdays uh, out of the way and uh, so that there's lots of people celebrating. But number one, I want to wish a very happy birthday to Kathy Wilson from Ottawa. Hi, Kathy. I hope you have a wonderful day. And also right here in Port Hood, Roderick Morris. Uh, he's a technical wizard. My, my, my savior many times. So thank you, Roderick, for being that person and happy birthday. Tomorrow, my sister-in-law, Louise McNeil, it's her birthday. Hi, Louise, and happy birthday. And also, on this Thursday, Cecil's sister, she's the oldest of 13, uh, Frances, is turning 90. She'd kill me for telling everybody that. But she doesn't have Facebook, so she's not going to know. But if you hear of, of her or you know, see her around, which you probably won't. She pretty much stays at home, but wish her a happy birthday or give her a call. She's a lovely person. And uh, so that's it for all of those reminders of birthdays. Hello from Dublin, Ireland. Hello, hello. I, Susan it is. How are you doing? So anyway, we're going to get started right away because we're going to put our fish on and uh, we're going to put it to, to the boil and we are going to then Ashley and I are going to make biscuits together. Just We've made biscuits on the show before, so we're going to do a quick job of that. And I'm going to get Ashley to put his apron on so he doesn't spoil his nice shirt. And um, so I just want to clarify something here. Today, we are making Teddy Angus L's fish cake recipe. Teddy is a very good friend of ours. He and his wife are wonderful uh, friends of ours. But uh, the local church... Um, uh, United Church uh, is 202 years old today here at the United Church in Port Hood and Kathy and Teddy are, are uh, very helpful in all the fundraisers for their church and when they have a beans and fish cake supper Teddy makes all the fish cakes for the the church for that so I know it's good and there's people out there you have your you use dried cod you use something else today we are making Teddy Angus L's fish cakes so don't ask me any questions I hate fish but I, I will do this today because Ashley loves fish cakes and I learned this week how to make them and I'll get through this and yesterday I made homemade beans so I'm going to serve Ashley homemade beans, fish cakes, and hot biscuits. And he's got a beautiful chow that he will talk about. I thought it was going to be his mom's chow, but it's another chow that he picked up. And I'm also going to get him to test Cecil's mustard chow. Maybe that'll go nice. So we'll send Ashley off with, uh, with that kind of a meal. So I'm going to bring Ashley in right now so we can get started. Ashley Angus Willie A. Ang Ashley Angus Willie. Hello, Hi. Ashley. And Hi. Thank when, you. When you say Teddy Angus Owl, is he related to Angus Owl, the, the premier? The premier, yes. I think there's a relation there because his father is Angus L. MacDonald and probably named, named after. after that. Because Angus L., of course, had relatives right, right. Here. here. And uh, he sure did. And you're, you're being very generous. I didn't know that you weren't a fish, like you didn't like fish. So to actually make fish cakes is really really nice <laughs> like my mother is not somebody who likes certain things cooked in the house yeah because she was raised eating a lot of it yes so let's say there was you know there was a lot of deer and a lot yes. of rabbits so she doesn't like deer cooked in the house and she, the smell of it just gives well, her a memory right i i see i don't mind the fish being cooked in the house i do mind lobster oh yeah being cooked in the house so cecil has this pot and a Thing, burner outside and they just put the newspaper out and they do I'll tell way. you the, the worst seafood I ever cooked that I made the mistake was 
and it's not, I guess it's seafood sort of, but in Toronto I bought frog's legs. Oh yes. And so I, I just boiled them. Yeah. And then I ate them. And then afterwards, <laughs> there was a little tiny bit of the foam left in the pot. I wasn't thinking it was late at night and I left it in the sink. And the next morning, it smelled like I was in the Judy Ponds. Oh yeah. Oh like my it, it was bad. bad. It was, so you got to clean out your seafood pots yes. after you use them. Yes, you obviously. do. And you have to get rid of your garbage right away. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Hello, hello, hello. Look at that. There's all kinds of people have joined just for you, I'm sure, Ashley. Hello, hello. I've seen a lot of people on my Facebook excited to learn how to make fish cakes oh, proper. okay. And, and I called them the king of fish cakes on my Facebook. So uh, everybody's like, okay, these are going to be good fish cakes. Yes. And my problem is every time I make a fish cake, I either don't mash it enough or I, I have a hard time cooking it and they'll fall apart. Yes. So this is the secrets that I'm gonna learn from Yes, you. well look, I, I have Teddy to thank for that. I went out, uh, we had a great visit. We made them together and you know, the trick is really, really mash it with a, a masher, like an old fashioned potato masher until it almost comes together. And uh, then he does his in canola oil they just stay Fr perfect. Fries them then. Fries them in just surface oil of canola mm -hmm. oil. And the other trick in making them, he said, make them into a ball. Yeah. And then just pat them. Pat them down. Just pat them down. And and uh, they're probably about four inches wide or three, uh -huh. three and a half inches wide or three, four or something like that. But the other trick is have your... Wet your hands in between every fish cake. While you're doing it, so and they don't it, get and sticky. And it's nice and smooth, and it's none of that lifting of potatoes and fishy stuff. So that's what I've learned from him. And so you not don't bake them. Fry don't bake them. them. Fry them in surface oil. That's what he does. I cannot comment on anything else. Because you've never had. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. So we're going to start, but uh, just in case anybody's making biscuits with me, because I really didn't advertise that we'd be making biscuits, but Ashley. Would like to know how to make biscuits. I'm going to throw together with him a pan of biscuits when we put the fish on to for the first boil. Well, so tell the truth. It's not that I want to know how to make biscuits. I never want to know how to make biscuits because so many wonderful older ladies show up at my shows and bring me biscuits. biscuits. And I thought, okay, if I ever learn to make them, then I'll stop bringing them. <laughs> but I've tried to make them, and I buy the the biscuit quick package no. sometimes, yeah. and you get something out of that. But when I do make them. I think it's the opposite of what you're saying for the fish cakes. I always, I ma I've mashed them too much and yeah. I get a hard biscuit. In yeah, you just, a... you just want to treat it lightly once it's all together. We'll, we'll, we'll go through all of those little tips. Perfect. But the very first thing is we're going to do the fish itself. So our local uh, fish co-op, it's, it's Kaylee Fisherman's Co-op right here in Port Hood. And I ordered early in the week some salt cod fillets. And Teddy said, never get the salt cod bits. Not for fish cakes, not at all. You get the salt cod fillets. And they salt the fresh cod right there. Uh, it's all, you know, from Nova Scotia or in the waters of Nova Scotia. And they do it right there. And they sell fresh and frozen. So if you're ever in Port Hood and they've got lobster, they've got all the things that you want. But when I went to pick it up, they wouldn't take any money for it. And uh, oh, I you. actually brought them, uh, I don't know, half, half a dozen. There was a guy that was working, uh, Leonard Toby was working, and uh, I gave him some chocolate chip jumbo cookies, oh, and he was very thankful for that. Well, you know, my aunt works at that co-op, too. Does she? Martha. Oh, no, well, that's the Port Hood grocery oh, store. Oh, you're saying the Fisherman's Co-op. Fisherman's Co-op across oh, the road my God. from they the co-op. They have co -op. the best seafood. Yeah, there. great really across do. from the co-op. Yeah. Great store. Just, you want the best. There you go. Uh, I got lobster from just, there about two weeks ago, and it was the best tasting lobster seriously? I've had in years. And you cooked it yourself? No, they had cooked it. And they whatever they did for you, or I think it was boiled. It. Okay. And it was boiled maybe in a little bit of salt water, but Probably. they were so good. Look, they know they know their stuff, and so there's Louis McDonnell works there, and uh, I think Bernard Bernie Angus Bernard works there, mm -hmm. and oh, there's a great crew, and Leonard Toby, of course. Okay, we better get started. We could talk all day. <laughs> Hello from Chilliwack, BC. Look, there's 903 people. God bless you all. This is wonderful. Okay, we're going to get started. I'm going to put the camera down and I'm going to bring over. Uh, oh, first of all, I, I have to explain the salt cod. So they salt the cod. But Teddy was telling me how 
how to solve the card. Say if you don't, you're not privileged to be close to a place that sells salt cod like we are. And um, but you can get fresh cod and you can salt it yourself with coarse salt. And I don't know where you buy that, maybe probably the bulk food store. But uh, you know, to, uh, take as many fillets as you want and make a layer in a pan and put the coarse salt over it, put another layer of fish, more salt, layer another layer of fish and whatever like three or four layers of whatever if you're going to be having a lot of it and um the other thing is then uh, uh you leave it at the very least three hours but it could be good overnight and that's that's how he explained you can be done fridge? and i then you put it in the fridge and you just leave it in the fridge that's that's when you're best. salting it though do you leave it in the warm or do you put it in the fridge I, I think he puts it in the fridge but i fridge. can't answer that for sure right. teddy was going to come and he was didn't want to be on camera and so anyway i said well if you want to come, drop in feel free so he may drop in we'll see we'll see but right. i don't know if he will because i felt that i think i have a good handle on making it and uh We'll go from and there. And they salt their own fish, you said. At the co at, yeah, and they'll do that. If you give them a few days' notice, they'll do that. Okay, I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to get the fish. So this is what I have here. I have two pounds of, uh, of salt cod. Oh, I can smell it. <laughs> <laughs> you get a good whiff of that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> can you see Ashley? No, you can't see Ashley. There we go. And uh, so basically when I got it, it, it was in the bag, and it had a... A fair bit of salt in it so I've rinsed it very gently under some cold water and uh, kind of did a couple of rinses off it and uh, poured it down the sink so now I'm going to put it in a pot and I'm going to cover it with cold water and I'm going to turn it on medium heat and uh, let it come to a boil and then I'll turn it off but while that's coming to a boil we're going to leave it alone Ashley and I are going to get a pan of biscuits together all right so I'm going to turn the camera down so you can see, see this. Let me see if I can do this. No, it's not working. There, that's the one I want. Okay, here is my cod. And you say not to use, he, Teddy said, don't use those bags of salt cod that's the dried cod. The dry, uh, well, he, for his recipe, no. this is what he uses. This is it. But there's plenty of people out there, like I'm sure, and, and in Newfoundland or whatever, that they do use the dry cod. But I don't know how to, to, to do that. I don't know how. This is this is all that I know. But I'm sure there's lots of people. Well, that's been one of my mistakes when I'm making fish cakes. I always just buy uh, frozen fillets and then I never salt it. I suppose that's and why they don't taste the same. Maybe it's because of that. Okay. So all I'm going to do, Ashley, is I'm going to put the, the salt cod in there. I can't believe I'm even touching this. <laughs> See, my mother loves lobster, but she's allergic to it. Oh, and she'll no. eat it like crazy, but whenever she's touched it, she's getting an allergic reaction, but she can't help it. She still Dear loves them. heavens. So maybe you'll try a fish cake today. No, I don't know. <laughs> you know what? I wouldn't be opposed to trying it. I mean, Papa, who raised me, was a fisherman. Right. So there was always fish around the house, always lobster, oysters. He had an oyster bed. So I've been around it plenty, right. and I've, I've had to eat it. Right. Well, maybe that's why it becomes <laughs> something if you don't have to do it, right? That's right. That's right. Okay, Ashley, I'm going to get you to just, you can chat with the people there. I've got, I forgot to get a pitcher so that I can pour the water in. This there. is a very nice uh, cooking dish you have here. It's, isn't it beautiful? Is it called like a, ca a cassolette or something like that? There's a name uh, for that. You know what? This, this is a cast iron ca it's pot. cast iron, yeah. Yeah, just feel the wet weight of that cover. Oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah. Actually, you know, t uh, the people on I've the show... I've needed something like this at a few shows to get rid of people. <laughs> <laughs> our, our daughter, Tammy, sells Pamper Chef. Oh, right. And anytime there's anything new coming out or whatever, and she says, That's "Oh, mom, nice you, you got to see this, That's and you got to nice see that." Thing, yeah. So this, uh, this is I love it. Stews, chilies, put it in the oven. I yeah. love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. And there's a there's a new one out right now. Beautiful, like a seafoam green, you know, on the enamel on the outside. I love it. I had one like this that, you know, it was like $260 and it was a Canadian Tire sell-off. I got for like 40 bucks, 80% yeah. off or something. You're kidding me. And uh, 
and then a friend wanted to borrow it, I've never got it back. Oh. You can imagine, right? Oh, yeah. It's nice to have, uh, one of the things I noticed, I mean, just even for basic cooking, like for a man, the basic thing, like to make bacon and eggs in the morning, if you don't have a good frying pan, or you don't have a good pot to cook in, you, you need some. You need to invest. It's worth spending the 50 bucks to get the good frying pan. You know? Okay, Ashley, I've got, I've got to tell you something, and our viewers. The frying pan we're going to use today. Oh, that's nice looking. This is the frying pan I'm using today. I, like I never told Cecil how much I paid for it. Uh -huh. It is Pampered Chef. It looks gorgeous. And I've had it for a year. I've never had such a nice frying pan. This one is the smaller of the two, I believe. There, there's another size, too. $180. And Cecil doesn't know. Well, I think he does, but I pretend like he now, doesn't is that, know. Does that have a grip on it? No. Yeah, it's, 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 just, it's got a bit yeah. of a, of a yeah. texture. Yeah. Non-stick. Non it says it's non-stick. But, uh, Listen, there's two things that I can never have enough of. That's cookware. Yes. And sheets. And sheets. I, like people think I must be crazy because I go to the Giant Tiger and buy sheet sales like every two weeks. <laughs> I got so many stacks of them. But there's certain things that you need to have in your house to, to feel comfortable. For me, that's what they are. Is, is a good frying pan, a good pot. Yeah. And I got to have a good Quality. spatula. Yes. Yes. That's the other thing. Yes. Okay, people, I'm going to put this on medium high heat. And when it comes to a boil, it's going to take about 10, 12 minutes. Uh, to come to the first boil, and I'm going to shut it off. I'm going to drain it, and I'm going to put fill it, uh, cover it again with cold water, and bring it to a boil the second time. The fish is really cooked the first time when it when it comes to the boil, but we're just going to do that for the salt. I know there are people out there that soak their fish overnight. The salt that that's been mm -hmm. their practice. This is Teddy's recipe. So I'm doing what Teddy says. Twice boiled will Twice. remove the, the right amount of salt. Yes. Yes. And he probably uses the fish from the fisherman's co-op in Port Hood as well. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Okay, so that's on a medium heat. Now, Ashley, I'm going to wash my hands now so I get rid of this. Yes, I just washed and, mine. And uh, you washed yours. Yep. And we're going to make a pan of biscuits. The oven is preheated to 425. And... Uh, we're going to get right to this. Can you believe how spoiled I am? I'm getting fish cakes and biscuits. Come on. And homemade beans. I, oh made, home I made homemade beans yesterday. And I can't wait to try Cecil's chow, you said, too. Yes, yes. Does, is Cecil, uh, does he have certain specialties that he cooks? He is a great uh, barbecuer. Mm -hmm. He loves pickling beets and chow. And uh, he doesn't really, uh, he, he loves to cook meals. Right. Mostly meat and potato kind of mm -hmm. bad. He loves Great. doing Very and you know, and he loves a really good barbecue and we're spoiled because we, when we started getting beef tenderloin and then cutting it, mm -hmm. there's no other steak that will come close to that. Right. Yeah. You know, yes. it's just the way it is. Okay, we're going to go through this really quickly so that we can get it in the oven. So Ashley, I, I'll put the flour in. So... I know my recipe. It's just regular flour. Regular all-purpose flour. I'm going to put four cups in. And if you have a, a, this is a dry measure where you need to, you know, uh -huh. you don't want to dense in the, the flour, but just. That's just, one cup. Or that's that, one cup. Yeah. That's a one cup measure. And I'm using four cups of flour. Now, I bought six biscuits in uh, the store in Judic at Wayne McGinnis' yes. uh, convenience store. And I think it's Pauline Campbell makes them. Oh my God, Pauline. And they're beautiful biscuits. She, she's And, and they're worth every penny, but I think, you know, like to, to buy a good biscuit, they're almost a dollar a biscuit now to buy biscuits <laughs> in places, right? It's so that's, true. It'd be nice to be able to, to be able to make them at home. And, and I know you've made them a number of times for people on here, but yeah. you probably have some new watchers today. Maybe so. Okay, so I'm going to put six teaspoons. How many was that? Three? That was three or four. <laughs> We might have a big biscuits. Okay, I think that was it. I'll better put a little bit extra just in case. I can't talk and work at the same time. And I'm going to get your hands busy in a minute, but I'm going to put about a couple of tablespoons of sugar. Sugar in, in the biscuit You mix. don't have to. You don't have to. But I do. Is there any difference in the biscuit that you'd make that you'd do for a strawberry shortcake? Yes, there is. 
And I use shortening uh, to make these biscuits. This is, by the way, your grand aunt's recipe, Marie. Oh, uh, Marie yeah, McIsaac, yeah. she'd be your grand aunt. Uh -huh. And uh, she was my mother-in-law. And- uh, Wilhelmina's sister, you're saying? Uh, yeah, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah Willie's sister. And uh, yeah. Willie's sister. Or Willie A's sister. Willie so A's she sister. Was she was a McIsaac. Right. All right. So I just put two teaspoons of salt in there. Okay, so and two teaspoons of salt, two teaspoons of, or tablespoons of sugar. Yep. Six, four, six teaspoons of, the, of baking, the baking powder. And four cups of flour. Flour. Great, okay. that's where we're at. We're, and we're, we're done there. All right. Now, we're going to put the fat in. If I were making... This is where I screw it up. Okay. So I'm just going to cut a half a cup of shortening. I'm using shortening. You can use butter. And if you were making strawberry shortcake biscuits, you would put more sugar in and you'd, uh, I would like to use real butter. And would you use the salt as well still? Oh yeah, everything yeah. the same, yeah. yeah. But just more sugar. Yep, just more sugar, make it sweet. I actually, the recipe I think is on my website there. My grandmother on the French side, she would use, uh, she would eat this lard or straight on a piece of bread. Oh my I god! I can't even think this with with fried onions or even raw onions in this. That's was oh a French, my god! French I treat. I knew somebody who who would make onion sandwiches. Yeah, oh well, she did, and I've, I'm, I gotta say I'm a little similar. I will too. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> okay, so Ashley. So now, how do you I, chop this up properly so that it doesn't? I know I the issues buy, about clumping and stuff. I buy my. I, I usually use Crisco. Mm -hmm. I use the measure on there. Is that what you're asking? No, I mean, once you get it in here, how do you make it so that it doesn't get a hard biscuit? Like, well, is there a way to, I, I to mix think this that, in? I think that the magic happens after you have put in the liquid that we're not going to handle it too much, and that'll keep it lighter. Okay. Okay? Do you want me to do this part, or do you want to do this part? Well, you all watch. Okay, you watch, and I'm just going to combine all of this in here. I think everybody can see that. I remember somebody telling me you had to have it come up to be like almost pea-sized. Yeah, little, little yeah. chunks. The thing is, is that you don't feel the shortening in it anymore. And just, you know, oops, I see a little piece of shortening there. So, that, you, so that it's mixed in enough that you don't feel the shortening That's in the right. flour. That's right, correct. Nice. Okay, let's see. We won't take very long doing this. Now, do you have a good biscuit cutter, Ashley? Uh, no, a tomato juice can. Tomato juice can? Yeah. That's about it, probably. And, Not and a real one. The, do you know the tomato paste? Uh -huh. uh, uh, th yeah. That's a small can. A lot of people, that's kind of the standard size for biscuits. Right. I don't make a standard size of biscuit. I like, that, that's my cutter right there. That's almost as big as a, a soup can, yeah. Yeah, and there, that makes a good, a good size. I think it's about a two and a half inches or something. So you see this is becoming nice and So once you've combined. got them in, you're, used, you're sort of sifting it with your hands. Through yeah, it and I'm just rubbing my hands together. Yeah. Ashley, will you have a look at that so you make sure yeah, it's not right. coming to a boil yet? No, not yet. It's not warm, yet. but it's not in the boil yet. Yeah, it's going to take about 10 minutes. So good. How many times I've been making something, and then I go to the living room for a second. Forget about it? But no, then I come back and I realize that I hadn't turned the stove on. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> such a man. <laughs> oh. oh yeah, that's why I'm not smelling your cooking now. <laughs> that's a good good reason. Look, I think that's perfect, Ashley. See? There's yeah. there shouldn't be any little pieces of if and if you feel them, just just combine them. So now you're going to we're gonna make a little well in the center. Like that, and that's yeah. where we're going to put the milk. Okay. And I'm going to go wash my hands first. So it's milk you put in, not water. Milk. Yeah. Look, I'll tell you about that. You just had a guest show up at your house. You did? Oh, I did. Yeah. I didn't even see anybody. Yeah. Kathy went out. No, right here. Oh, it is. I was telling you about Teddy and Gazelle. And I he's wondered here. if you might show up. That's who it is. <laughs> nice to Teddy, meet you, Teddy. Teddy, we, we, we want to... Uh, I was explaining. Okay, I, you can answer the question without being on camera, Teddy. Um, t uh, Angazelle, your father, Angazelle. Is, are you guys related to the Premier Angazelle? Yes. How how related? Uh, he he would have been my great grandfather. Your great grandfather. Well, there you come from. Great Good great, great, great grand uncle. Okay. Was gotcha. he the first Premier in Nova Scotia? No. No. 
But it was it was early late day, 1800s, or always that that late, eh? Right. When the castle was opened, it was the the deceased by He was around before that, right? So you put the milk in the well. The milk well, and that's how much? One cup again? Two. Two cups. Two, even. Don't go over, because you'll get a too wet a batter. And I'm just going to pull it down. I'm going to gently just kind of make a S through it. This is what I do. All the flour is getting a bit of it. Yeah, and we're, it's, we're going to bring it all together and then put it out on the, uh, the mat. So how do you know if it's too dry or too much milk in it that you would, I assume, add a little more flour? Or? No, you, if you, you, the thing is, follow the recipe. Just follow the recipe. Follow the recipe. Don't no. defer from that at no. all. And this is proven by your grand aunt. Uh -huh. And I've never changed it in all my 50 years of marriage. <laughs> I've, I've made her biscuit recipe and it's never failed me. And uh, sometimes the stove, if it's, if it's a... The stove has changed in some way or fashion. But, um, so I'm going to just pour a little bit of flour on the table. Just like that. And you can see, Ashley, how it's all kind of together. Yeah. It's still, it's fairly moist. Fairly moist, yeah. yeah. You need that. But you didn't do anything tough to it. And that's, that's nope. what I say it's... Sometimes I've kneaded it and, and done oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. Well, you, you, I will n knead it a, a, a tad because you have to bring it together into a ball. So you're going to have to work with it a little bit. And I'm just going to sprinkle a little flour over it. Okay. And I'm going to bring it together a bit. But just gently. Uh-huh. Now, do you ever, once you've done this, can you chill this, put it in the fridge, can save it, or do you have to make them right away? Is that the best thing? I would never, uh, you can't. I know you, people have done that for the cinnamon rolls, for example, and it's worked fine for them. They make it and they put them in their fridge overnight and they make them in the morning. I would, it takes such a short time to make them. I don't know why you'd right, bother. Right. You know what I mean? So I, that's just come together. Just That's just perfect, perfect. the way it is. It's kind of smooth. Yeah. I'm going to... Clean off my hands here. And I'll tell you a little trick about the bowl, which I've shared with many of the viewers. Oh, I heard that. Yes. You just sprinkle it with flour and you're going to, you know, you'll rub that and, and you won't get have to wash that doughy pot. Okay. So, so you now can roll it out some. Just some, just gently. That's just enough. That's the thickness the biscuit's going to be, basically? No, it'll rise a little more than that. Yeah. But I, I guess that's what the baking powders were. That's it. It's uh -huh. gonna, that's the leavening agent, just like that. And this is the other magic that I have found. And this is this pan is, like, I swear, 20 years old, when Tammy used to sell Pamper Chef years ago. But I find that it prevents... Oh, it's nice and heavy, too. Right? It prevents the... Um, the bottoms from really Put a little flour getting on. hard. Yeah, and yeah. I, I do that. And let me see now. I've got a, this is where I'll get Ashley involved. So for every biscuit, you're gonna dip it in there. You flour the cutter. And. Wow, oh, isn't that nifty? Okay. Oh, they look perfect. Why don't you do a couple and okay. then I'll finish her and off. And so you just put it in there like you're dusting it. That's right. Okay. And I saw you twisted it a bit. Uh-huh. And, and then I... lift her up. And if it doesn't come out, I'll get it. Oh, of course I didn't. I, the first one, I got it wrong. <laughs> that's all right. I'll get it. If you didn't Is get that it. okay? Okay, that's perfect. Close. So usually this recipe makes about... I suppose about 15 or so. And sometimes they're just perfectly imperfect. They might not be. And I space them just a little bit. All right. 
And we'll get these in the oven, and they're going to be in the oven for 18 minutes. It's just about coming to a boil your fish there. The okay, we're boil. going to get Teddy to have a peek at it. Teddy, do you want to have a peek at that? Make sure that it's not boiling. You're not on camera. Don't worry. <laughs> is it looking so okay, Teddy? From cold twice to get soft. Yeah? Depending on how salty it is. Right. So, Teddy, this is what I did. I was going to call you, but the, when I took it out of the bag from the uh, from the co-op, from right. the from the Kaylee co-op, um, I uh, so I just rinsed gently it. rinsed it. Uh, with with some water before I put it in there. Mm -hmm. That's okay, right? Uh, yeah. So that there's this that I let it's this. Okay, I, I don't want to do that. But it's okay. Yeah. Okay. When you're making the fish cake afterwards, you don't uh, because you be salt. You don't have to add any salt or anything like that to it. No. Pepper. Or pepper. Yes. You can add pepper. Uh, yeah. Actually, yeah. Whatever. Now, if you're doing fish cakes for events that are happening, you must have to make dozens and dozens and dozens of them, do you? How many do you make for the fish well, suppers? Over 200 for the things to eat them. Over 200. Yeah. Okay. I knew. Well, you've got a perfect 15 there. There. Now, this, this is the one. There's always one that's bigger or smaller, and it's the end. There now. Awesome. So that's how you make biscuits. That's it. There was none of this... I, I mean, I, there's just something that seems like it's it's hard to get them to, to work out right, and I think it's because when I when I put the shortening in, I would somehow do something wrong there, and by the time I take it out and eat it, it would just get stiff, and it wouldn't yeah. they wouldn't come out like a nice fluffy looking biscuit. So I think they'll turn out okay. I'm gonna put them in the oven for 18 minutes or so. Maybe it'll be 19. And look at that. Our fish is just coming to a boil. I'll set the timer for 18 minutes. You're going to do the second boil. Should we play a tune, me and Kathy, again? I while think you this? should, yeah. So, uh, and I'll t you start playing, and I'm going to tell them what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep the apron on, though. Keep the apron on. <laughs> okay, so the biscuits are in the oven for 18 minutes, and uh, he's going to he's going to play the fiddle. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to strain the water off that uh, first boil. I'm going to fill and cover the fish again with cold water and put it back on for the boil. And there's Teddy. He doesn't know. He wouldn't know that he was on camera. Okay, let her go.
the square dance again. So I know, I know, I know. I so uh, the, uh, the, the friend, Teddy, has checked the fish. And yes, we're putting it on for the second boil. And once that happens, the, the magic happens. And we'll, Ashley and I will put the whole thing together. And uh, I know somebody's saying they'd love to be able to chord like that on the piano. Well, K Kathy Holly is one of the best. And uh, we know that. Uh, but somebody, um, <laughs> Ashley, you look cool with that apron on. <laughs> That's what they're saying. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, somebody was asking uh, about the, the cod bits and Teddy uh, answered that and he said, yes, you can use the cod bits. If, if that's all you have uh, access to, yes. But what cod bits are, they are, are parts of the fish that are not the best part. They're pieces of the outside or what do you say in there, Teddy? Yeah, that's right. right the outer Part. It's not that it's not the best part of the best meat of the fish. So that's all I know. But anyway, we Christine McKenzie McCush, yes, hi. Ashley, we waited a long time. Hello from Boysdale, Marlene. <laughs> oh my god, what a day. Isn't this just a wonderful day? You know? Whose fiddle are you are you playing there, Ashley? I'm playing one that I found under the bed at my parents' house that I took down to the Germans today in uh, just below Harborview on the Shore Road. The German Johannes Sturm. Uh, we call him the German because he's from Germany originally. He's the, the the repairman who will do really really great work here. There's another gentleman, Lena Le, uh, LeBlanc, who's done work for me as well uh, and has done beautiful work. But I've known the German since about maybe 30, 30 years or so. So when, it, when in a pinch I needed something put together quick, I, he put a bridge and a tailpiece and stuff on this and I'm gonna do a little more adjusting, but he's actually taken my good fiddle that was busted the other night and he's gonna repair that over the next week or so. He'll do a job for me. God, how, how come it happened? How did it bust? I played six shows and I hadn't played a show in 18 months with it. Oh. So uh, to actually full on put the power that I'll put onto an yeah. instrument, it just went, oh, yeah. help me. Yeah. And it split and then the back end of a really split wide open and I warped the whole thing. I mean, you imagine how much pressure I'm using for the wood to, to warp. To warp. So a lot of sweat, so the dampness, and then just the pressure between here to here when you're into it and you're playing hard that pressure with the wetness caused it to split and then warp. Okay. So it's repairable, but uh, you know, they're, 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 they say it's not the truck, it's the driver. So I try and play any fiddle I can, but when you have a good instrument, they're worth fixing. So you gotta take the yes. right amount of time to do yes. it, right? So yeah. I, I can't have them do it overnight. Yeah, thing. and you can't change your style of playing either. It's what we're used uh, well, to. Well, you know, playing in the kitchen here, we're just playing for a cooking show, trying to enjoy <laughs> yourself. I'll play one that I wrote for you. How about that? Oh, my God. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. On your birthday. On my birthday. Yeah. <laughs>
I'm going to work over there. Proud am I to have a tune written for me by Ashley McIsaac. And uh, uh, Ted, Teddy's actually, my, uh, my onions weren't chopped fine enough for, for Teddy, so we are going to... to uh, That's what I wanted to ask you, because I saw that you had a, a you know, a, sort of a large dice and, and fish cakes. I mean, some people, they don't just like, like onions, onions, right? They don't like onions, So yes. I, I guess the idea is to mince them really small, yeah? Mm -hmm. And the other thing, like, uh, if there's somebody who loves fish cakes but doesn't like onions, they could always use, like, onion powder, I suppose. And uh, Teddy and I were talking uh, the other day. I'm, I'm telling things and I'm saying things about Teddy here. And he's going to say, oh, my God. Yeah, what did I get myself into? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, uh, some people maybe use it uh, in, a, like, a blender or, or a food processor. And when you do that, the, a lot of the juice the happens. Water out of them, yeah. And, and, and it will, it, it'll be, they'll be really wet. And that will make your, uh, your fish cake even wetter and you might not want that and so it's best to just dice you said something else too to about the fish so that it didn't uh there was something that you said when you were or in the potatoes so that it doesn't get the wetness in it you make sure you yes. boil the potatoes with the yes peels off. yes so what what that is is uh we're, we're using uh, my potato uh that i bought as teddy told me we got a russet potato uh, rather than new potatoes, because new potatoes are, are, you know, fairly, you know, they're moist and they'll, they'll keep their moisture in and they can kind of get gluey if you try to mash them. I don't like new potatoes that, that you use that, uh, to make mashed potatoes. They just don't work, but they're great with the jackets left on them and, and all of that with, uh, with homemade cheese or, <laughs> or something like that. But uh, Ashley, uh, I... don't want to tell... I, I'm going to tell you. Of course I'm going to say it. I shouldn't say this. Maybell Chisholm McQueen. Yes. Doyle. Yes. Uh, she told me a secret years ago about new potatoes. Okay. I was having a problem with digestion. Yes. She said, Ashley, get yourself some new blue potatoes and boil them and you'll never have a problem going to the bathroom again. <laughs> Oh Everybody my has God! Little tricks with, with foods, right? Oh, that that's that's awesome, and she is awesome. She's she's the lady. I'm going to put this down, and I don't want to be around that window. There, that's a better option there. Uh, oh, she's now I'm right on it. I don't want to. See I want to, I want you to be the star. Of course, you are the star. But uh, Maybelle, when she'd be playing the piano, she'd uh, you'd look at the piano after she left, and there'd be a streak of red red, red, red. nail polish. Yeah. And she would just <laughs> sweep down the keys. Yeah, uh, she, we used to call it great. Maybelle's blood. Oh! <laughs> when we go to a hall and we'd see the piano say Maybelle's blood on the piano. Oh my God! It's from the fingernail polish. Well, Kathy, you have uh, played your first recording. When did you? When was the first record you were on? 1966. 1966. And who speak are you speak for? really loudly so that they With can the hear you. Winston Fitzgerald and S. Wood Davidson. That was the only record I was on. If you want to hear that record, uh, Winston Scotty Fitzgerald, S. Wood Davidson on guitar, okay. and Catherine Ann, was it Lamy? Yes. It's listed as Catherine Ann Lamy, uh, recorded in 1966. Was it uh, a 78 or was no, it, it was a full, a full long play record? What's the name of the record? The Imitable, I think it's called. Yeah. The Imitable Winston. Imitable Winston Scotty Fitzgerald. Yeah. One of the classic records of Cape Breton fiddle music with the lady who's here now performing today. And, and you've been performing this summer. Uh, a lot of people are very excited to hear that somebody who hasn't played publicly very much, a guy by the name of Cameron Chisholm, who would be a uh, member of the famous Chisholm family, a brother of Maybell Chisholm. And he doesn't play very often, maybe every 10 or 15 years he takes a fiddle out in public. And you've been doing shows with him in Port Hood. Well, we did two at the park, down at Central Park in the center of Port Hood. And uh, he's playing again tomorrow night as part of the closing show. There's a two hour show from six to eight in the park. And he's one of the entertainers that's on there for tomorrow night. And you'll be there as and well. And I'll be there yeah. as well. And uh, yes, everybody's really excited about Cameron Chisholm's playing because he, he's a legend for sure. It's like if all of a sudden somebody said, hey, if you go down to uh, the road tomorrow night, you'll see Babe Ruth is playing baseball. It's that sort of thing. So Cameron will be there tomorrow night for the closing of the Park Series in Port Hood, which uh, I, I'm here at Mary Janet's house in Port Hood because of Mary Janet's show. But I come to Port Hood all the time 
if you aren't familiar with it, Mary Janet did take her show down to the beach one day. It's the most beautiful beach that's probably in all of Atlantic Canada and, and arguably until you get to maybe, you know, South Carolina or Florida. Warm, warm water, uh, very, very sandy, white sandy, and you can go out a long ways and you're still, you know, only up to here. So beautiful place to take your kids. And uh, so far, no shark sightings there. So, Port Hood is good. Uh, Port Hood is good. So you're getting to the point where you have the mashed potatoes ready there, or do you mash the potatoes before you put them in in the fish? What do we do, Teddy? Put it all together. Put it all together, and then mash the, it all together. Do you want me to turn this back around yeah. you on the bottom there? All right. There you go. Here we go. I'm going to turn that down. So the fish is done. Oh, the, the biscuits are almost done, too. I forgot. I've Do you actually... have to let them cool, the fish, before you use it? Um, you don't have to. It's better to cool it. Let it cool a bit, yeah. It's best to let it cool a bit. Okay, mm. so everybody knows that. So basically what I did... Uh, over Teddy was telling me what to do is the the fish had its second boil. Oh my god, that's so hot. The pot itself is hot. The pot is hot. Uh, and so I just used this kind of a masher, potato masher, and I mashed the fish nice and fine. Your favorite thing, fish. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine. That's it's so funny. Cecil just got such a kick out of Your me kids doing must be this. Going crazy seeing you doing of this. course, of yeah. course. Okay, Ashley, would you hold the other side of that with yep. this? Uh, the pot itself. The pot itself, yep. so I can dump it in into the potatoes. Okay. So you have two pounds of of the mashed uh, desalted cod going into how many potatoes are cut here? Well, we the recipe says fourteen medium potatoes, but I ended up with ten or eleven fairly large potatoes so that's all I cooked and I diced them up Put your hand there there we go and do you want me to get your buzzer here yeah and I'm going to check the biscuits why don't you go over there and start mashing and then I'll add the eggs and so we got the, the potatoes which are diced they're not mashed yet mm -hmm. and it's mixed in with it the fish and do you mix all the rest of the stuff you have Teddy here I see you have yes. two eggs yes and do you whisk the eggs before you put them in or just put them in whole? Well, just dump them in. Them Either way. Yeah. So there's two eggs are going in here. There, Ashley. Oh my God, look at those biscuits, everybody. There they are. They look oh, good. Oh, they look amazing. Okay. So there's two eggs. There's a finely diced, what's that? Two onions, maybe? Two onions. And then uh, two pounds of the cod and 10 fairly good size, almost large potatoes, or you could use 14 medium, medium potatoes. This is all gonna get mashed if I don't lose half of the stuff here on you. I'm trying the fish. Okay. Oh, there is a little salt with still. Nice. So I just mash this in, you're saying? Yep. Okay. Should I add the egg right now? And the onion? And the onion. Add the onion right now. And how uh, how mashed do you want it? You want it mashed really fine? Yes. Really fine. And so we have uh, this point you can add pepper or Teddy likes to use this garlic plus pepper. Can you see that? Garlic plus. What will I put in it, Teddy? Teaspoon? Oh, you got a lot. Here. Just a few shakes. You got a lot of potatoes here. You can put quite a bit in. I'm a fan of garlic, anything. So, and I like pepper too. That good? There we go. And when the, and put the okay. We're gonna put the the egg oh, in now. I dropped the potato. Don't worry. This floor has seen it all. I should be probably mashing these faster or harder. I don't know. No, just take your time. The ultimate question that everybody who's like me, which is just a basic at home chef and not with all these skills like Mary Janet, is what's the difference between a brown egg and a white egg? Anything? Just the color of the hen, usually. Is that what it is? I think so. 
Because I have some people say, oh, the brown eggs are better or the white eggs are better. Is no. there any real difference? I get the eggs from, uh, from the Sutherlands just down the road here. They're our neighbors. And they have different color hens. And, um, I, uh, and, and we get a couple of dozen every, every week or mm -hmm. every two weeks. And uh, they, um, I get brown eggs and I get white eggs. And there's no real difference no, in the sorry. egg or the egg quality. There's sometimes different different sizes because they're not we're, we're just buying them for our own use. And uh, my gosh, eggs are expensive in Nova Scotia. Yeah, when yeah. I went to the grocery store, I mean, I live in Ontario, and obviously there's more people, so there's a lot of stuff that's cheaper. But I think it was six something for a dozen at the, the grocery Ooh. store the other day. I was like, really? Jeez, it was wild expensive. And you know, post pandemic, we're going to see rises in a lot of prices in everything, aren't yeah. we? Yeah. Everything Absolutely. So you want no lumps in this? Is that the deal? Uh, that's the deal. I'll, I'll get the inspector to have a, uh, have a look. <laughs> there we go. Ashley, you missed a spot. Somebody said. Yeah, oh, I missed quite a few so far. <laughs> There's some big chunks here. Eddie uh, or Teddy really, really kept on mashing and mashing, you know, until it's nice and smooth and it's going to kind of come together. Do you want me to take a turn or? Oh, you're doing everything for me here. I should try and do the, some of the labor work, shouldn't I? <laughs> uh, place the fiddle upside down. Oh, he's doing a great job. He is Avon. <laughs> That is expensive for eggs, somebody's saying. Yeah, it was, I don't know, I think it was in Sobeys, and it was just like, really? And maybe it was one of these fancy organic eggs or something. Well, you know, it could it could be they're in a different section. There's still some lumps in the potatoes. So there'll be lumps in the fish cakes if you... If you, you don't want you know, that. Yes. Yeah. And you see, see, I think the reason that you do that is because the more you're mashing, the more it's coming together. And remember you said you had a problem with yours yeah, coming apart? Yeah, that was my apart. problem. I'd, I'd try and put them in the oil in the frying pan, and if they, if I didn't have it hot enough or something was wrong, then the next thing you know, I was having fish cakes falling apart in the frying pan. Yeah. So that's nuts. I was just amazed. Like, when I came home from Teddy's, I took two uncooked uh, ones home because I wanted to fry them up myself mm -hmm. and uh, I was amazed how nicely formed they stayed in the pan and they were so easy to turn over. Now I've seen fish cakes occasionally in a restaurant where they'll have corn in it. Oh? You know or a piece of green pepper or something. Well you know what it's it's everybody's taste. And maybe it was a crab cake something like crab that. Cake, right? yeah. But maybe that's because crab was expensive and they just wanted to put filler in it. Yeah there, there's that. Right? And I mean everybody I mean, likes what cheap, they were either. raised with there's there's people in cape breton that were raised with you know a different style of cra ca crab cake they they like their the way their mother made it or whatever mm -hmm. right teddy is this a recipe that you were raised on uh yourself your mother and father made it this way yeah you heard his mother made them this way we're getting pretty mashed here okay ready for inspection ted so have a look I'll let 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 Teddy have a, have a, a gander here, and I'll have. He's gonna put the drill to her. Could you use an electric hand mixer, Teddy? I don't know. It might make a mess. Yeah. I never tried it. So. It would make a mess of your potatoes, maybe, right? It's summer savory. You know what? I'm absolutely clueless on any of those spices or whatever. It's whatever you like yourself, yeah. really. Do it exactly. to your own style. You know, this is a plain fish cake with just the basic goodness uh, that they were raised on. So, you know, that's I, what we're making. I gotta say this to the person who said that about spices. I live in Ontario and I go to the dollar store and my cupboard is filled with like, I can open it up and I can make an Indian dish like that because I got 15 yeah. different spices. The curries Because they're all cheap, that. you know, and yeah. then you buy the coriander seeds, you buy this. In Cape Breton, there wasn't a lot of spices, salt and pepper. Yeah. Right? There's exactly. your spices. And there's something, 
really natural about the food and the taste because of that. Yeah, so then if, you like, can I isolate thinking, the taste. You can isolate it. Now, yeah. I was just thinking, okay, if you wanted to add something to a fish cake, you could just put curry powder and make it a curry. But then that's not a traditional fish cake. It's not. And yeah. so many of the great uh, things, at Port Hood particularly, I used to play here at events, at a wedding or a funeral, and afterwards all the local ladies would bring, you know, casseroles to a certain thing. And there'd be five different potato salads, and there wouldn't be much difference between them all. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And they were all great. Basically, and so it's, yeah. it's about the, the love you put into it rather than trying to fill it with a lot of different flavors. The flavors are the fish, the flavors are the potatoes, the flavors are the onions. That's what makes this how it should be. Perfect. And he just formed one, and we're seeing a lovely sized fish cake there. So this is the one that Teddy just made. This is the size. So it's about one, two, three and a half inches and about an inch thick or something. And he has a kind of a little dome on the top. So we're gonna, we're gonna do this now. And uh, the trick is to, uh, that Teddy says that the trick to having a nice smooth finish, which I mentioned before, is to have your hands wet and wash them frequently. You know, that would be great. Uh, maybe we need a bigger bowl than that. Okay. How about that? Here, here Teddy. Or, or cold water. Okay. And it should be, yeah, that should be on the cold. And we'll do these together. And Teddy's probably going to be shaking his head and thinking, oh my God, it's my name's on this. <laughs> you're making meatballs off and this is good to have something to... Yes, yes. Okay, we're going to put the camera down. And Teddy, we're going to, or not Teddy, Ashley, we're going to make this. So here we go. All right. So we're just going to form a nice mound about that size. Can I just dig right in? Hands have been washed. Dig right in. I'm going to wash them again just to make sure because it's playing the fiddle. Probably about the size of a, a tennis, not a, just almost as big as a tennis ball. Oh my God, those biscuits look lovely. So just grab a bunch of it, right? Yep. And so you form it into a ball first and then... Form it into a ball. This is what... Teddy was trying to show me last week, something like that. Just okay. pat it around, pat it so that it's, and yeah, you've got a good one going there. I was making a small one. Here, I'll add some more. And then just pat it down. Yeah, about that thickness. That sounds good. Does that feel better than yours when you were making yours? Oh my God, yeah. I was, I was, like literally, they were crumbled. And the things I did wrong was I didn't, mash the potatoes enough when I use potatoes and I uh, I didn't mash the fish in it I just threw the fish on top of it and then mixed it okay so once I had the mashed potatoes first so I wasn't getting the consistency that holds together right I think that's probably my big my biggest issue oh now I see why I should have put the water on there first it's sticking right yeah that's a smaller one John Lamy is watching. Any relation to you, Catherine? My brother from Toronto. Oh, really? Hello? Hello? He's in Shetty Camp for the summer. Okay. Joseph Des Moines, actually. There now. What do you normally get out of a batch this size of uh, the two pounds when you're making the size you'd make? Would you get a dozen or more than that? More than that. Probably 16. 16 to 18, Something then. Like a dozen to a dozen and a half. So, I mean, you could probably, you know, cut That's the recipe in half, there, but Sorry. if you're going to all this work, you might as well make a bunch and you can, and do they freeze okay, Teddy? I, uh, uh, well, you, you probably, probably never, never had. <laughs> never I, had reason to, right? No. <laughs> I don't know. I never really. I have frozen fish yeah. cakes that after I cooked them. After you cooked them, you not before? After you cooked them. After Well, you know, when you go to buy a bag of these pre-manufactured fish cakes, they'll sell them in the store now. You get like 10 or 16 in a bag. They're okay. They're just not. Yeah, no. I mean, because they've been, once they're frozen, it's one thing, but uh, yeah. when they're mass produced and, and frozen is a whole other thing. Don't leave them frozen too long, you know. Now, I'm, and, I'm, and I will eat any, I mean, I will eat anything. I eat frozen foods. of. Uh, I'll eat anything. If you're hungry. There's only one thing I don't eat. Celery. 
Okay. Anything else, but celery for some reason I have a bit of a of trouble with. You just put that on top of that one? Yep, that okay. sounds good. Where are we? One, two, one, three, four, three. five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I'm on number thirteen. All right, well, we're going to get what he said about sixteen here. Sixteen or seventeen. So now, you fans out there of Mary Janet's show are often seeing her bake wonderful things. And uh, this is a little different process, obviously, to be making fish cakes for you. So I thank you again, <laughs> because I, I know now how to make them. And we got the recipe from, as I said, this gentleman yes. here who's uh, an expert in doing it. And he's a fisherman, fishes lobster. What all do you fish, uh, Teddy? Lobster. Oh, sorry. Lobster? Yeah. Is that a good season this year? Yes, it was. Yeah. The price was good, but was the, the catch is good? Yeah, the catch was good. Yep. You know, I like uh, a reasonably priced lobster, as anybody who loves lobster does, but I'm very happy to pay whatever it is. And the, the more it is, uh, to be honest, I know that it's better for the fishermen, so I don't mind. I mean, we were paying a couple of years ago. The price of lobster was similar to what it was in the mid-'80s. You know, you could, you could get lobster on the wharf for 5 and $6 here recently, and we paid that back in 1985. And I thought, well, how is this possible? Because everything else is more expensive. Yeah. So lo the price of lobster has to go up. It makes sense. Okay. We're ready to cook. I'm going to wash my uh, hands. You're going to wash your hands. You've got a couple hands. of odd-shaped ones for me there. That's all right. But you can see them all. Oh, they look good. We're ready. We're all ready. We're going to go over to the stove and I'm going to see if I can. This get is everybody the part that I'd be nervous to do. <laughs> I, I really have a problem uh, for some I mean, I guess these won't stick. That's the whole thing. That's oh, my well, I, I'm telling you, the ones that I, he gave me that I cooked. You know, the fish is already sort of cooked because we've, we've boiled it and dissolved it, and the potatoes are cooked. What does it usually take? Do you do it like on one side and then on the other side and that's it? That's it. So like browning them three or four minutes on each side. Yeah, if it, does, if it takes that long. Maybe not, Maybe even, not that long. even that long. So uh, Teddy says surface oil might be an eighth of an inch. I'm not sure. Uh, Ted, do you want to have a look? Just enough to cover the pan. And as you cook, like if you cook the whole batch, you'll have to keep adding a little oil after every... Is that enough or a little bit more? A little more. How about that? Yeah, you got a boat as well. See, an eighth of an inch. Let's, we'll, we'll see how this goes. Okay, I'm going to... Yeah, there's another thing. When you are cooking something with oil like this, the can stick, and then you are going to do the next batch, Would you? how many times can you use your frying pan full of oil? Do you got to clean it out and put new oil in it? After the second time. So you might get two fries out of it, but then after that you should put fresh oil in your pan. I do. Yeah. Start getting sticky and start getting. Okay. Did you hear? Stuff. Did you hear that, guys? Uh, Teddy will 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 put a little oil in the pan, and um, we have to bring this oil up to. We kind of have to watch. You can see it kind of just a, a little stir on the top or something when you know that it's hot enough. And when you put the, the fish cake in it, it'll start to fry immediately. So we're going to wait a few seconds. That's canola oil that I'm using. That's what Teddy recommended. And uh, what were you just saying there? I was uh, saying how many times would you use the pan? Yeah, so he'd yeah, he, so only, he'd only do a couple of batches and then put, clean what, out the frying pan, the pan, and, pan and, yeah. and, and put fresh oil in. So there now, there's John, John Lamy. Hi, John Lamy. Kathy's there just being a great uh, watcher here. And Maureen Mitchell saying her Cape Breton mom made the best, best fish cakes. And uh, we're great. Well, Teddy might disagree with you. Because <laughs> I think Teddy thinks he makes the best fish cakes. <laughs> we're going to find out here. And I believe it because, I mean, like I said, that's the, the great thing about a lot of Cape Breton recipes are, it's not about adding uh, sprigs of thyme. No, and, it's just... And, uh, you know, sautéed chanterelles, you know, like you gotta, 
you got to work with the ingredients that are local. So everybody has potatoes. Cod was obviously very popular here for years. Have you ever made these with other fish other than cod? Yes. Yeah. Hake. Hake. Haddock. Hake, Hake and haddock. haddock. Salted so, so though, right? Salted hake or salted, salted fish. haddock, right? Can you bake uh, fish cakes in the oven? Oh, that's my cousin. Out. Hi, Mary, out in BC. Can you bake them in the oven? Well, Teddy doesn't know because he's never done that. But, I've tried uh, it. And? Now, I, well, the thing with baking them in the oven is you have to bake them long enough that they're really cooked through. Or they, again, maybe it's just the fish cake that I was making. They fell apart. They weren't, they weren't as solid as it like. So it takes a long time to bake them. So obviously uh, doing it in the frying pan would be a lot quicker. Your frying pan is, uh, you've got a gas stove, so it's getting warm pretty quick. Do you think it's ready, Ashley? I'm not seeing bubbles yet, but... I don't think you're going to see bubbles. I'm just getting the beans uh, in, a pot, in a smaller pot. So that Traditional uh, fish cake dinner would be fish cakes, maybe a biscuit, and beans, of which Mary Janet has homemade beans here, to show you. And I like to have either a green tomato chow or a mustard pickle. And her husband, Cecil, has his own mustard pickle Which uh, uh, I have shared that recipe with them. And oh, they look good. the recipe beans. for the beans and for Cecil's ch mustard chow are going to be in the cookbook. Listen, once these are cooked, you know I'm going to eat. So I better play some more fiddle tunes while you're in this. You go ahead. You go ahead. So I am that. going to put the first one in so you get to see that. You can hear the music. And then we'll... Ready. Would like to fish cake real while we're here. Thank you. 
out of the pan. First batch, I'll bring it over to oh, show you. Oh, look at you. that. Nice and brown. Oh, delicious looking. There they are. And I'm just going to put my hands on this one. I won't give this one to Ashley. So you can see both sides. No, I don't want to catch cold. <laughs> <laughs> I'll mark that one. <laughs> it's got my mark on it. But anyway, we're going to ask Ashley if he doesn't mind playing another tune. And I'm just warming up the beans and then I'll bring a plate and you can see it. Oh my. Have it. Momentarily. Hi. Well, for you folks that haven't made it down to Cape Breton this year and then would like to, uh, obviously there was restrictions at the border um, up until near the beginning of July. But if you have your vaccinations, you can still get down. Uh, there'll be, needless to say, beautiful weather for another six or eight weeks here. September is often one of the nicest times to go to Port Hood Beach because there's usually less people around uh, and the water is still really warm. So if you haven't made it down and you're coming down, great. Maybe I'll see you around. But if you don't, uh, make sure you come next year and there'll be lots of wonderful people to make you homemade food in the kitchens if you have family and if not, all the local restaurants and chuck wagons and stuff will appreciate your business as we need as many people to come visit Cape Breton as possible. And with that, since you're not here and you're out there, we'll play my Cape Breton home for you.
Mary Jane is putting the tea on. We'll play the Irish washerwoman. How about that? <laughs> great music the very best all the squares on the table too i didn't forget the squares i didn't forget the squares there now here we are so we've got kathy where are you kathy there you are I'm here <laughs> there they are okay i'll just show you ashley's plate there's his fish cake and his beans and He's, this, is this your husband's? This is Cecil's. And there's our biscuits. We're going to have biscuit. Right, we'll do this here. And you can explain about this chow he bought today at the market in Mabu, made by um, Cultural Fusion Kitchen out of Shetty Camp, green tomato chow. And uh, I, I would have made uh, it myself. I had a, a literally a prize winning recipe that uh, mine I used to make, Dad's mother. Yes, yes. And I put it in a cookbook back for like in a school contest. Oh, it wasn't in the cookbook you did? Well, you, eventually I, there, it, it made it to another one in yes, Port Hood. Yes, yes, that's the Kelly and Christus. Yes, but back in 1980 or 81, I was five or six years old, I put it in this little kid's cookbook and you know, everything in it was like marshmallow Sweet. squares. <laughs> and then it was a green tomato chow chow. From <laughs> so it, it was, uh, I've always liked this. And so I couldn't make that yesterday because I was dealing with fiddle issues. But this green tomato chow comes from the, as you said, the Cultural Fusion Kitchen. They're out of Shetty Camp. They have their own Facebook page as well. And she told me today that they actually have uh, an arrangement with Glenora Distilleries now, which is a beautiful place to go have dinner, where they're actually doing a, uh, I think it was a type of marmalade 
some type of special thing that they're doing in their cooking. Cecil, come on in, it's your own house. <laughs> Cecil just came to the door and I'm talking here and it's his chow that we're gonna try. So we'll leave this for later. Um, but yeah, check out their website, Cultural Fusion Kitchen, because they have apparently really nice homemade ingredients in their stuff too. Okay, do you take milk in your tea? Do you take, do you drink tea? Oh my God. Will you have a glass of water? I'll try tea because I'm here. I've never had a cup of tea in my life. Oh my dear God. I'm, I'm the You're like of, our daughter, Margie. I'm the only Cape Breton other than Margie apparently that doesn't drink tea. But you know, I've, I've had a, a small cup of Chinese, the little yellow tea in, in a Chinese restaurant. Yes. But you know, everybody always comes to the house and is like, you got red rose to get that? I go, no, I don't got no tea. King Cole in this house. King Cole. <laughs> King Cole. It was a merry old soul. Okay, well there's, there's about a half a cup for you. Beautiful. Kathy, these I, are my... I'm, I'm a bit of oxymoron. I, I, I figure I'm a very Cape Breton person, but that I don't drink tea is, is, is an odd thing for sure. Ashley, I have to share a story with the audience that involves you. And before I do tell that story... I'm going to grab a biscuit to her. I, this is what I'm going to tell you about the biscuit. The best way to have a warm biscuit... Is your fork, Split Ashley. it with your fork. And just like you would an English muffin. To, uh, to, like this, you're just saying. all the way around, not a little bit, and, and a little bit, and uh -huh. a little bit, and then you have all of those crevices, just like uh -huh. an English muffin. Ah, and then the butter sits in and it. And the butter sits in it. Uh -huh. did, That's I, a secret. did I take your knife? I did. So right. little pokes around the outside of the biscuit. Especially if it's warm, it doesn't really matter. Oh yeah, when it's, look at that. It's just. <laughs> I'm being treated royally, folks, by Mary Janet. And Mary Janet was my step dance teacher when I was a kid. She taught my sister too. And uh, it's, I was here, I stopped in last week when John Pellerine was here, because I'd seen him advertising. But if you haven't watched your episodes, are they, can you go back through your page and see all uh, your episodes? Some yes, of them? yes. Oh, so you can, for anybody who's new, you can go back over my Facebook page, which I am going to start repairing a little bit, because I haven't, done anything to all of those old ones. However, my son, uh, Brennan, has put them all on a YouTube channel. And um, they're, they're there on the YouTube channel. And everything's by the same name. Tunes and Wooden Spoons, named by our daughter, our, our granddaughter, Anna. And um, anyway, oh my God, Ashley's having a sip of tea. <laughs> oh my God, that's, that's awesome. But anyway, so Ashley, you are having tea. Thank you. I Beautiful. am going to taste the fish cake. Are you going to do the fish cake? Oh, well, Cecil should be in here to see this. <laughs> Let me just give this a little Listen, taste. Listen, Teddy is... Uh, Teddy is gone, of he's course. He's gone, but he was so wonderful to stop in, and clearly his recipe is one that the, the local folks here know about and that you're going to try it, Mary Janet. That says everything, Teddy, doesn't it? Uh, so, I trust Teddy, go. and I know okay, exactly we'll what's in it. we'll go at the same time. Okay, people. <laughs> okay, oh, I, I, I'm onions, a smeller. The onions are good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, good, delicious. Mm. Mm. Not bad. You know that you didn't cough it up and run to the sink. It's <laughs> I perfect. didn't. It's uh, I no, they are wonderful. <laughs> they are wonderful. Definitely. Did they taste like anything like what you want your fish cake to be like? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. There's, I think it's because it's cod. There's a nice hint of, you know, there's fish, mm. but there's, because there's a lot of potatoes for the amount of yeah. fish. You yeah. know, I was wondering, would you taste the fish cake in it? Yeah. And actually, I, I made a mistake, oh, too. I mean, I put two pounds in the recipe, but Teddy said, depending on how many potatoes you have, it, it's okay if there's more fish th mm. than the two pounds, no, too. It's, it's, and the Kaylee went and gave me like two and a half or three pounds. And here I am with the scale, oh, measuring no. out exactly two pounds. Throw it in. But I should have thrown it all in, and Teddy, Teddy said that no, we're gonna, when he we're came. Now we're going to chow, too. Okay. Here. That's really good. Mm, mustard pickles. Yeah, mustard pickles. Good? Oh, yeah. Yeah, my French grandmother used to make something like this, too. Okay. Lovely. Made with cucumbers. That's a hit, Cecil. Yeah, cucumbers, recipes in the, in the, in the cookbook. So, Hello. Ashley, a sip of tea and a bite of fish cake. <laughs> I have to tell you a funny story about Ashley. Do you remember when Mitchell was in Canadian Idol? Mm -hmm. Canadian yeah. Idol? Yeah. Our son Mitchell was in 
that singing competition way back in 2008. He was the star on us. He was, the, you know, he, I mean, he, I think it came down to him and one other person. Yes, yeah, end, right? it came yeah. down to yeah. the two finalists. Yeah. But anyway, we, we were such supportive parents. We, we kept saying, season when I said, well, we better go, because he probably was going to get, you know, voted off. And he kept going to the next round. I'm saying, oh my God, we have to go again. We would go to Toronto or whatever. So one of these trips we went on, who lands at the, the event of, uh, of the live television broadcast, but Ashley. And uh, he had been in touch with us and whatever. And of course, Ashley being the personality that he is, they wanted Ashley to be front and center. So they placed him in a chair like behind the judges, uh, you know, where the, all those judges were sitting. And um, anyway, and you know what? There was something going on with Brian Mulroney that week. What's there? And Ben Mulroney was on the show. I think I brought the magazine and, and showed it to Ben. It was something about his father. Oh, no. It was the Gomery scandal or something, right? Oh, oh my I God. I remembered it now. Me. That's me. Uh, oh, sorry. Lord God. I'll cut you off. Go ahead. No, no. So, anyway, it was sometimes they'd just pick at one of the the contestants. And that, that night, it was uh, Mitchell's turn to be picked on. By the guy that was one of the judges. Zach. Zach. Yeah, Zach. And uh, so anyway, unbeknownst to the audience, when they're like that, they know where the family sit and they have a camera like down below the seat and on Cecil and I. And we're supposed to pretend like we don't know that it's there, but it's mm. there. <laughs> and so it was their night to talk about uh, or, or to pick on an idol. And that night it was Mitchell. And somehow they found out that he was he was part of a step dancing family that had been in whatever, and Ashley being Phil player and from Cape Breton and also step dances, they said Zach said that night, why don't you step dance right back to Cape Breton? Basically, I that. do you remember that? Yes, I certainly. And do. of course, here's mom. This is our ba my baby of seven, and I am having. Are you remembering this? And I I want to cry. Like, I immediately feel this cry coming, and I'll say, be damned if I'm going to cry in front of the camera. The show is over, and I, I'm overwhelmed still, and I'm scared. I'm, I want to get out of there so that I can cry by myself with Cecil. And when we get up in the corridor, they have all of the idols are sitting at a table, and they have to do, you know, autographs and stuff. There's still, we're still about eight or something on, on the show that night. And I see Ashley coming. And you had kind of an entourage with you. Uh, uh, looked important-looking mafia kind of guys. <laughs> probably. probably. <laughs> with long guys. trench coats and everything. <laughs> and, I, and the cameras are still around because they're, the, they're getting the footage so that they have reality TV or something. I'm not sure. later, yeah. <laughs> and so, anyway, I'm still feeling very overwhelmed and I'm still so hurt by that comment. You know, being a, being a mom and being from Cape Breton, and I'm proud of Mitchell. And so Ashley comes over, and he, he starts talking to uh, me about what was said. And I kind of whisper, because I don't want anybody to hear. And I said, Ashley, don't talk about it, because I'm going <laughs> to burst out crying. And Ashley said something that made me burst out laughing. And he said, Mary Janet, you need to talk to my mother. <laughs> <laughs> Because he was, he was the bad boy for a long time. <laughs> Remember those days? Was. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? It just took all of that awful feeling that I had away. And I laughed and I said, well, isn't that the truth? <laughs> well, you know, the nature of uh, touring and being across Canada and all those things that come with the business of it. Yeah. Mitchell saw that yeah. really quickly. And... Um, it doesn't matter how crazy it is. There's always a center if you're from Cape Breton. Yeah. You get somewhere you can get back to. Yeah. That's yeah. why it's it's everybody loves watching your show because it's it's natural, it's organic, it's the way it's supposed to be. It's not fake. Yeah. It's, I mean, and and that's that's the nature of the music business. We go on stage, you go to another town, we put on a show, and you know you're doing the same show over and over again, and you try and make it seem as real as possible for people, but you know it's a show. That's one of the things about Cape Breton. We put on a great show because we don't have to do anything except just be ourselves here. Just, yeah, yeah. And it's, uh, it's a, a very comfortable feeling. And I can tell you one thing that was a dandy meal. Oh, was it good? Oh, my gosh, thank you. <laughs>
Okay. Cecil wins. Cecil wins. <laughs> wins the chow? Yeah. That's good. Now, Ashley, last week, you couldn't mm -hmm. stay until mm -hmm. the butter tart squares were finished. They look something else. And last week was raisins. This week, I made them with uh, pecans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and because you had mentioned pecans. And Aiden, our grandson, is not here today. So... Have a try. I'm gonna take this smallest one here. And there, I know you don't like sweets so much. You know what? So when I got home, the neighbor had been watching her show, and she made some, and Get she out. brought them over. Yeah. Oh my God! Yeah, they Isn't look just that like these. just like in King mm -hmm. Breton? And Kathy, when you're ready. Mmm. For sure. Mmm. Like that? Mmm. Yeah. That is good. Okay, I have a couple more things. Uh, and um, I was wondering if you'd take us out with the tune in a minute, but I'm yeah, gonna for just. Sure. Uh, Talk a, a couple of things here before we, we leave. Uh, thank you for a great afternoon, they're saying. So uh, I, I just want to tell you about the Cape Breton tour that we're doing. There, there, there's, there's a couple more seats. I know I was, I, was, I was up at Ronnie's just having a little visit, and uh, he said there's just, a, just a, couple, a couple of seats left if anybody wanted to do that, and, and they can go to sandytraveltours.ca. Uh, or call 877-726-3947. I'm looking forward to that. Next week, remember when I was doing the Lobsterlicious tour and we were going around to all the restaurants and so on the last night, Cecil didn't go, he was lobstered out at that point. Mitchell came with me and we went to the Wood Road restaurant down on the Shore Road near Margree, Margree Harbor in that, in that road. And uh, that night, the, the chef... Uh, the, the chef and his brother, uh, Daryl, and uh, what's what's the other guy's name? I can't his believe His other brother, Daryl. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> anyway. Uh, oh, God, what was his name? Dennis? Oh, I can't remember. Anyway, they are wonderful people, but they, uh, they, uh, they have a pastry chef there. Uh, her name is uh, Anne-Marie Woodgate. And uh, her grandmother's from Shetty Camp or whatever. And they were encouraging, well, I should have her come on the show. She is coming next Sunday. Anne-Marie Woodgate is coming here. And because blueberries are in season, she's going to make a lemon blueberry cake with a cream cheese piped on uh, frosting per serving. It's, it's piped on. And on the top is a blueberry compote. And I'm going to have some local blueberries uh, for her to work with, and we're I'm just so excited. She's 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 an amazing. Oh, that that night that we were there, there was just a lovely dessert, just excellent. So anyway, uh, that's what we're doing. And she sent me the pictures already, and she sent me the recipe. And uh, I'm working this week, so it, it's great. I don't have to make it because she's already made it and made, done the picture. And I'll post it on Wednesday. And I'll be back home next Saturday and get the blueberries, and we'll be all set for Sunday. So uh, I want to take this opportunity to really thank Kathy Holly. She's always so giving and wonderful with her piano playing, and there she is. How was the meal? Oh, it was delicious. Can you see yourself there? Yes. It was yes? delicious. Yes, <laughs> I enjoyed every bite of it. And I'll send Ashley and them home with some of those fish cakes. And um, but anyway, I want to thank uh, Kathy, of course, which I did. But this wonderful man, uh, you know, just a star and professional uh, musician who was willing to come here and give his time to me. And I'm so thankful, so thankful, Ashley, for you doing that. I really appreciate it. Oh, we're cousins. And we're cousins. Well, you're cousins with Cecil, and I, I guess that counts. Yeah, sorry. it counts, right? Yeah. So uh, anyway, thank you. Uh, oh, I know. A honest to God, everyone. <laughs> this is Daryl, and this is my other brother, Daryl. I know, I know, I know. Capers are the best. So we're going to take you out with a good tune from Ashley and um, Kathy. And uh, we will see you next Sunday. And have a wonderful week. And I'll come back to love you in a minute. <laughs>
to me, love one another, and I love you. Bye-bye. Um, hey, hi, it's me, Charlie. Um, if, if, if you, you like, like Grandma's, Grandma's video, video make, make sure, sure to, to give it a like and, and subscribe. Give it a like and subscribe.